so that we sing together the very first song there. Jesus only is our message. Jesus only is our message. Jesus all our theme shall be. We will lift up Jesus ever. Jesus only will we see. Jesus only is our savior. All our guilt he bore away. All our righteousness he gives us. All our strength from day to day. Jesus is a sanctifier, cleansing us from self and sin, and with all his spirit's fullness, filling all our hearts within. Jesus only is a healer, all our sicknesses he bear, and his risen life and fullness, all his members still may share. Jesus only is our power, hence the gift of Pentecost. Jesus, breathe thy power upon us, fill us with the Holy Ghost. And for Jesus, we are waiting listening for the trumpet sound, then it will be us and Jesus living ever with our God. Jesus only, Jesus ever. Jesus all in all we sing, Savior, Sanctifier, Healer, Baptizer, and Coming King. <laughs>
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 23. Acts 23. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse, that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, what is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner. Claudius Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews, and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army, and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee, and gave commandment to his accusers also, to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him, and returned to the castle, who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was, and when he understood that he was of Cilicia, 
I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. Acts 24 And after five days Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence, we accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain Lysias came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, Forasmuch as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before thee, and object if they had aught against me. Or else let these same here say, if they found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul, and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, when I have a convenient season I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him. Wherefore he sent for him the oftener, and communed with him. But after two years Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. My name is Daniel Ogbadu, and this is Thank God Who Cared. It was on 27th of March, 2023. We normally have the great global crusade, and this time is the turn of Cameroon global crusade. And so, I was supposed to go with my wife to the crusade. Then, at the time, my wife never called. Then, when she came back, I asked her. Then she told me the reason why she was late, that the madman asked her to give, to give him food. And he buy food and give to the madman. And she told me, can she go and bring the madman to the crusade? I said, why not? Go and bring the madman. Go and bring him. Now that you have given him food, he will obey you, he will follow you. Then she went and then brought him. The three of us started marching, going to the crusade. As we are going, because of the way he looked, he looked so haggard, and people were asking, where is this man with his wife going with this madman? Because they know him all around there as a madman. Then getting to the crusade, wanted to join together with other people, why how they were sitting together, but others were saying, no, he was smelling. 
It looks so rough that you should separate him, but we say no, let him sit together with us. And then he sat down together with us. After the message, then the convener of the GCK said we should lift up our hand and then put our hand where it's pending, where we have a problem. Then one of the pastors now lift up his hand and then pastor started praying. The first thing pastor said is, In sanity, madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That is how he fell down to the ground. Then he was there on the ground, struggling on the ground. We left him after the prayer. Then I took him and sat him on the chair. I asked him, what is your name? He now replied and told me his name is Thank God. And then I asked him, where are you from? He said he's from Cross River. And then he asked me, which year are we now? I told him we are in 2023. Then he said, all he can remember is 2019. Praise the Lord. My name is Thank God. I want to thank God for how God has healed me. I'm no longer a madman again. And my desire is I would like to continue in my education. And I desire to be a pastor. And my prayer is God should help me to become what you want me to be, be in him. Even before the Jericho walls fall, we're shouting, we're praising the Lord. He will fulfill our expectation in Jesus' name. Look ahead, a new quarter beckons. The seventh month opens the dawn of possibilities. GCK is your conveyance unto Christ as this July offers you great moments of possibilities. And everybody will know you will say I know because I feel it in my body. I sense it in my soul. I see it in what he has done. The July edition of the Global Crusade with Kumuyi GCK. Old July 27th to August 1st, 2023 at 1600 hours GMT daily. Live at Obomasha Grammar School, Okeowode, Obomasha. Or your state, Southwestern Nigeria. GCK. Seventh month special Sunday worship on Sunday, July 30, 2023. Oh, 700 hours GMT. A special time for ministers, church workers, and professionals to be purged for more fruitfulness. At Clare Park, will be set for youth, campus students, and young adults to go beyond limitations. The rejuvenated global choir will take you to the presence of Jesus in grand style. As we also bring you special guest music ministration by Jeff Deal from the USA. God's servant, our international evangelist, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi, will be mightily used by God to reveal great possibilities through the power of Jesus Christ. GCK, live from Ogobosho, streams to the world via satellite and all our social media platforms, and will also be broadcast on radio and television all over the world. Coming from the Christ on the cross, Coming in from the Christ who rose up for your salvation and for your healing. Coming from the Christ that sits at the right hand of majesty on high. He will set everyone free. Christ has assured us of great possibilities ahead. So join us. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Hello friends, I am Pastor Michael Dada, the Regional Overseer for Deeper Life Bible Church USA. This is that time of the year when we come together for our highly anticipated convention where we experience the outpouring of the mighty move of God in our midst. The theme for this year's convention is Possessing Your Possession and the location is our Deeper Life Bible Church Conference Center in Kingston, North Carolina. Convention time, friend, is a time of spiritual renewal. It's a time of Pentecostal experience. 
a time of divine healing for their sake, restoration of our lost glory, and inspiring worship with our guest music artist, Jeff Dale. We have dynamic ministers from all walks of life, with workshops and seminars for our upliftment. Register today at deeperlifedc.org. I will meet you there. Indeed, it's going to be great tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Yes. And as we celebrate one year of great works of the Lord in our midst, your testimony will be resounding in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not live here the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrations continue as we sing along with the Washington team to praise the name of the Lord.
If you are ready for tonight's blessing, celebrating one year of God's goodness, I want you to rise up and shout hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah.
No weapon that's fashioned against us shall stand. Oh, 
We listen to a few testimonies now. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I, I am Dr. Olaugu Uluwale Dominic, 
a consultant, obstetrics and gynecology. I'm here this evening to introduce our testifiers to you. I assure you, if only you can just believe that Lord has done great things in their lives, we do greater things in your life in Jesus' name. Your challenges will not outlive this crusade in Jesus' name. The first testifier is Brother Fashemon Emmanuel. So, we but I said, Devil, I just told you, and one to have five years for Jason, go 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 and healing of palpitating uh, heart. The Lord did it for him. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Next testifier. The next testifier is Kayode Akiyemi. Praise our Lord. Bodu Pala Allah. Praise our Lord. Motu pa lo wa Olorun. O ke ni ni mera. Ale 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 ejo on. Melu o ke Olorun. Mo sa wa ti sale. E ma ti brother mi. Bi mo se de sale libe. Bi mo se de sale libe. Baba, o so pe ka gbo won le bi to dun. Mo gbo won le eti mi be le. Mo gba duwa. Mo ni ka Olorun. If you told me, Monica Law, Bami Koyo, Monica Law, Bami Muko, Lime, Monica Bami Muko, Lime, we must go walk through my bag. No, no, come in your lever. May the better than that to die. Praise the Lord. Four year hearing defect was taken away after the prayer of the man of God the very day the GCK started on Thursday. We confirmed from the relative that brought him. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Impairment of air, perfectly healed. Is that the little you can do? I want to hear your clapping. To the glory of God. The next testifier is Mrs. Adebayo Jumoke. Praise the Lord. Mo dupe fun igba la okan mi la koko. Mo de dupe lo wa Olorun fun ore t'Olorun se ninu aye mi. Mo dupe lo wa Olorun tori pe ojo Thursday ta koko de bi ni mo gba ise iyanu. Mo tin jiya fun ogbe enu fun bi odun marun ti mo de ti lo kakiri awon hospital. Won fun mi logun gba to ti eya mi o lo mo tori ti mo ba ti logun yen o tun ma pada wa mo wa file mi o lo. Sugbon mo dupe lo wa Olorun tori pe ngba ti baba wa nu Oluwa ngba dura lojo Thursday yen ton ni ka gbe owo le bi to ndun wa mo gbe owo le bi ti kini ye ti ma nta mi mo de dupe lo wa Olorun pe imi de tin yen ni mo gba iwo san I have the concern healed praise the Lord put your hands together for Jesus you can do better than that as you are clapping for others, your miracle will reach you as well. The louder you clap, the faster your miracle will reach you in Jesus' name. Five-year peptic ulcer, vanish forever. Praise the Lord. Our next testifier is Brother Oluwashe Laju Abraham. Praise the Lord. My name is Oluawashi Olaju Lloyd Brand John the Blood. I thank God for the grace and opportunity given me to be here. Lo and behold, during 
our programs, the faith clinic, the seminar, and the Bible studies, the Lord transformed my life. My life is never the same again. Being a visiting missionary from Glad Tidings Evangelical Church, I have received more inspiration to forge ahead about my mission outreach in order to excel with our father, one of the best father I have to God's kingdom. And lo and behold, as I attended all the programs yesterday and uh, Friday since I came, my right eye was paining me seriously each time I closed it. Right now, lo and behold, I have received divine healing. No more pain on my eyes. Praise the Lord! Let's have a word of prayer, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come to you on behalf of everyone connected right now. And I pray tonight will be a night of the supernatural. Tonight will be a night of heaven coming down upon every life in Jesus' name. Salvation free. Healing free. Deliverance free. The supernatural connection free. And solution to every problem tonight. Giving free to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray as the message comes on, you'll be distributing signs and wonders to everyone. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down now. We're coming to the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, we're looking at chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the timeless testimony of signs and wonders. Testimony up to date that is still happening today. Timeless testimony of signs and wonders. And then the people who are giving the testimony to us tonight. Number one, Nebuchadnezzar. Number two is King Darius. And then number three, you are going to find Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they stand up to tell us how great our God is. The God of the supernatural and the God of deliverance. And that same God is coming to you today. He will change everything that needs to be changed in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. Open your Bible. If you have a Bible there, if you don't have a Bible, I'll read it to you from Daniel chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I didn't hear your amen. When a wicked king, a notorious king, an idolatrous king, a wicked one that was wicked beyond the definition of wickedness. When it comes up to say, it's talking about signs and wonders, you can be sure it's a testimony that something had happened. And just like you are there tonight, something will happen to you. Something good. Something gracious, something powerful and mighty will happen to you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, I thought it good. That's Nebuchadnezzar talking. I thought it good to show signs and wonders. Look at that. Nebuchadnezzar said, I thought it would be good for me to give you a testimony, a timeless testimony. He said, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. Look at that. If God can work miracles in the life of Nebuchadnezzar, it will work miracles in your life. If the Lord can do signs and wonders in the life of such a simple, notorious, bad, 
worst of all people that ever lived on earth if god can do a miracle if god can bring healing if god can bring deliverance if god can do signs and wonders in his kingdom and then he can now come out and say i thought it would be good for you to listen to my testimony if he did that for him he'll do it for you i see miracle coming your way i see salvation coming your way and i see signs and wonders coming your way tonight in jesus name look at this how great in verse 3 are his signs great signs and then he says how mighty are his wonders you see those two words there again coming from the mouth of nebuchadnezzar he says how great are his signs then he says how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation this is another generation the generation of Nebuchadnezzar is gone but he then assures us he says his power his glory his kingdom it is from generation to generation and in this generation a miracle will happen to you like the lord god almighty gave mighty signs and great wonders in the life of that man in that generation it's your turn what are you it's my turn say that remember it is free you don't have to pay anything salvation tonight is free for you healing tonight is free for you and the power of the lord penetrating your life like an explosive and then blowing away every walk of the devil destroyed in your life tonight it is free you'll be a partaker in jesus name now that is nebuchadnezzar and he gives us the testimony that god is yeah, the god of signs and wonders look at Daniel chapter 6 in Daniel chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 25 here is another king then King Darius wrote unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth he made his testimony global and he says I'm Darius I'm king I'm sending this testimony timeless testimony to all the earth peace be multiplied unto you you won't say amen to that one look at verse 26 in verse 26 i make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the god of daniel that's my god the god of shadrach meshach and abednego that's my God the God of Abraham Israel and Isaac that's my God the God that opened the Red Sea that's my God and the God that brought them out and there was no one feeble man among them that's my God the God who saves and the God who heals and the God who delivers and the God who can stop the mouth of the lion that is my God. Who is your God? Idol of wood. I said, Who is your God? The one they put a, a pot upside down and they are pouring oil. Is that your God? Broken pot. Is that your God? Stone. Is that your God? Let the God of heaven. The God of signs and wonders, the God of all power, and the God that has dominion from generation to generation, make him your God tonight. Wonders will happen in your life. He says he is the living God. Look at that. Look at Darius saying he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that we shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even 
to the end. Look at verse 27. Verse 27 says, He delivers. That's our God. He will deliver you. He rescues. That's our God. He will rescue you. And look at what Darius is saying. Look at this. Look at this. And he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth was delivered Daniel from the power of the lions and whatever lion that running lion that is walking about wanting to crush you and destroy your life the Lord will deliver you tonight he came to destroy the works of the devil and every work of the devil in your life is destroyed tonight in Jesus name the timeless testimony of signs and wonders from Nebuchadnezzar, from Darius, from Daniel, from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and from me, and for you, is coming your way. Tonight you'll be saved. Tonight you'll be delivered. Tonight you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at before we pray. The prayer tonight will catch you wherever you are. If you're outside, it will meet you there. If you're inside, it will meet you there. If you're online, this prayer tonight will reach you in your place in Jesus' name. Three things. Number one. Number one, signs and wonders for the worst of sinners. Signs and wonders for the worst of sinners. Number two, slaves of wantonness found wanting and short-sighted. Slaves of wantonness, deep pottery, licentiousness, fleshly practices, slaves of evil and slaves of immorality, they are found wanting and short-sighted. Number three, seekers of wonders with willingness to surrender. As you come to the Lord tonight and you say, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, I surrender myself to you. While you are saying that, miracle will meet you there. The mercy of God will reach you there. And everything that is problem in your life, all the problems, everything today vanishes away in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, signs and wonders for the worst of sinners. We're coming to Daniel chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 34. It says in verse 34 of Daniel chapter 4, it says, I at the end of the days, I Nebuchadnezzar. It says, Don't message. I'll tell you my name. I'm the one that is testimony tonight it says I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the most high and I praise and honor him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation that's the man we refer to as the worst of sinners why do we say that this is the man that raised up an idol and said everybody on earth shall worship that idol and he said if there is anyone anywhere that will not worship that idol i'll catch him throw him into the fire and then he said tell me which god can deliver that man out of my hand that the kind of man the kind of sinner the kind of rebel and the kind of blasphemer he was his name nebuchadnezzar and then 
all the people he said when you hear the drama and you hear the music that i put forth and i told those musicians to begin to play you fall down and worship he said i do not recognize any other god anywhere anytime and then the people they feared him he was a cruel man he was a wicked man and whatever he said it will do he will do and whatever he said he will do it to his servants if he wanted to kill them because they did not obey him that he will do the worst of sinners and eventually god allowed shadrach meshach and abednego three standing men three upright men and three faithful men and they said we will not bow to any idol like you are saying tonight you will not bow to any idol i will not bow to any idol after you give your life to the lord and salvation comes in free salvation full salvation when salvation comes to your heart the power to stand and the power to be different from all the other sinners in the world who are bending down and bowing down to idol the power to stand the lord will give you in jesus name you know after you are saved the lord will give the spirit of shadrach meshach and abednego it will put that inside your heart if they say everybody bow to say no i stand for jesus anybody there i stand for jesus if they say eat all those things sacrifice to idols you say no i take the word of god and no evil thing will come into my life anymore then somebody came to report them and said oh king nebuchadnezzar there are three people in your kingdom as you said everybody should bow everybody should bend these three people shadrach meshach and abednego they will not bow they will not bend they said what in my kingdom don't they recognize who i am and don't they recognize if i say i will do anything i will do it they said call them here and then they called them they said what am i hearing i hear that you will not bench you will not bow now i'm going to give you a second chance when you hear that music it's for the whole nation and this is was their national religion if you bow down i'll forget the past and then i'll release your but if you don't bow if you don't bench who is that god that will deliver you out of my hand that's how bad how sinful how terrible how blasphemous nebuchadnezzar was and yet this worst of sinners eventually received a miracle i think there's hope for you i say there is hope for you whatever sin you have committed even if you are the worst in the village and the worst in the town and the worst in our state here and the worst of sinners anywhere you are if this man nebuchadnezzar the worst of sinners if god forgave him if god set him free if god changed his life it changes coming your way tonight in jesus name but no in his sin he said who is that god that will deliver you out of my hand and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we're not careful to answer you, O king. If you want to do that, I want to assure you, we're not going to bow down to your idol. And our God is able. Say, my God is able. My God is able. Our God is able to deliver us from your hand, O king. The man was furious. He was more angry than anybody on earth had ever been angry. He said, his chief men should take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and then put them in the fire. In the forties, actually. And those people that took them, the fire was so hot and the flame that came out of the furnace 
bunch those people to death and then as the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego got in they fell down because they threw them there and then all the cords that bound them all those cords were burnt off every cord of the devil that brings you today everything will burn off every yoke of the devil that pins you down to the world and to the things of the devil tonight all that yoke will be destroyed in jesus name and shadrach meshach and abednego rose up and then jesus came out from heaven and he was in their midst and they were walking in the fire you will walk through the fire and the fire will not burn you and then Nebuchadnezzar did not know what had happened. He said, let me peep into that furnace and see what has happened to those foolish boys who said they were going to serve God and they will not serve my idol. And then as he looked in, he said, what am I seeing? One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Then he turned to his people and said, tell me, did not we cast three men into the furnace of fire? They said, yes, O king. He said, I can see four. They will see four. He said, and the fourth one is like the appearance of the Son of God. And they put you in the furnace, Jesus will come and meet you there any dungeon any prison jesus will come and meet you there and then eventually he brought them out but he wasn't converted then in chapter four now again he was walking around babylon he said this is babylon that is built by the power of my might and then judgment came from heaven and then he was struck and became like an animal he was driven into the forest he was actually eating grass like an animal and for seven seasons it was like that but then when that came his mind turned his mind said i've been fighting against god and it doesn't favor me it doesn't favor anyone to fight against god and then he returned in his mind unto the lord as he returned unto the lord that's how a change came the mind of an animal was taken away his might became the might of a man and all his counselors they sought after him and he became king again and the lord restored him into the position that he had lost tonight god will forgive you he forgave nebuchadnezzar he will forgive you he changed the heart and the mind of Nebuchadnezzar as he turned to the Lord. As you turn to the Lord tonight, the Lord will change your heart in Jesus' name. And then he became an honorable person, a dignified person, a beloved person. And now he said, I'm going to tell you what the Lord has done. He received signs and wonders, even though he was the worst of sinners. That's why I bring the good news to you tonight. And I'm telling you, just at the mention of the name of Jesus, your Savior, at the mention of the name of Jesus, your Lord, at the mention of the name of Jesus, the one that died for you on the, cal on the cross of Calvary, all your past sins will be forgiven. And then you will tell you, salvation is free. I gave it to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm giving it to you now. And you will receive in Jesus' name. And do you remember Paul the Apostle that became the greatest of all the apostles? He was a bad man too, a wicked man too. He was persecuting the church. In fact, he himself said, I was the chief of sinners. And God forgave him. And God set him free. 
Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament, Saul of Tarsus in the New Testament, the Lord turned them around and the Lord changed their lives. Now it is your turn. Who will be the next? I said who will be the next? To give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and for that free full salvation to come unto you. You will be the next. There's testimony waiting for you already in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. Point number two, slaves of wantonness found wanting and short-sighted. Now, this is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And he became a king. Normally, the grandchildren, they refer to them in the Old Testament as the son of the other person. That's why when you read chapter 5 of Daniel, it will refer to Belshazzar as the son of Nebuchadnezzar. If you have your Bible there, his story is in Daniel chapter 5. And it is from verse 1. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. It says in verse 1, Belshazzar king made a great feast to a thousand of his laws and he drank wine before the thousand. You can see the description of the man, the life of the man, the habit of the man. You can see his position, you can see his religion. And then he says in verse 2, in verse 2 he says, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and wives and his concubines might drink therein. He made this feast. And then he was not satisfied with all the cups of gold and silver in his own in his own empire. He said, "We conquered Israel. We conquered Judah. All their worshiping vessels. Go and bring them." He wanted to drink wine out of them. He was proving that he was greater than all those people of Judah because his God, his idol, had um, conquered the children of Judah and then he got his wives many wives and then concubines many concubines and all the counselors and everybody he got them together he said drink and be merry there's no God anywhere there's no judgment anywhere look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over he gazed the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall and of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote then in verse 6 then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees moved one against another. You know, the, the person who have been bragging, uh, what will God do? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what can he do? The God of Judah, Jerusalem, what can he do? Bring the wine for me and bring uh, all the utensils for me. I will drink in them. Nothing will happen. And if they say heaven will fall, I don't care. Heaven is not going to fall on me alone. But judgment day had come. The people who wait for the judgment day, when that judgment day comes, they will not be able to stand. Look at Beshasa now. You will not be like Beshasa. Say, I will not be like Beshasa. You know, gathering, gathering women, 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 wives, one is not sufficient, and concubines, concubines upon concubines, and he lived an, an easy life, a fleshly life. A worldly life, a, a life that spoiled him. He didn't have any character at all, even though he had a crown. There are people that have crowns, no character. They have certificate, no character. They have names, popularity, no character. 
there are women running after them but there's no character and what the lord is looking at and the final day will be that character not your crown not your certificate not your profession not your money not your houses not the land you have is looking for character he wants people that will live according to the word of god and keep the commandments of god but you have not you have not because the bible says all have sinned not to live by Shazam, all have sinned and come short of the glory of god now judgment is coming and then is near were knocking together and there was a writing on the wall he wanted somebody to help reach the writing on the wall look at verse 9 in verse 9 then was King Beshassa greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished they were astonished they were surprised there was nothing they could do and there was no solution to the problem there is no solution to the problem until the word of the lord comes to you plain and clear and then you can have a proper understanding a proper interpretation a proper application of that word unto you because judgment is coming if you will repent today if you will turn away from your sin today that judgment will not come upon you again he said the times of ignorance god went at the times of ignorance you see Belshazzar was ignorant he did not understand that blasphemy against God will bring judgment he did not understand that a promiscuous life and immoral life going from this woman to that woman and from this uh, concubine to that concubine he did not know that that would bring venal disease in his life he did not know that alcohol will turn him mad he did not know that all those things will spoil his life will destroy his life and it was a time of ignorance there are many people like that today they drink but they are ignorant they don't understand and they smoke they are ignorant they do not understand the consequence of that they blaspheme god they sin against god they sin in the public and they sin in the private they are ignorant they do not know what that will mean in their lives but you know if tonight you said i was ignorant that's why i was playing with satan i was ignorant that's why i joined the cult i was ignorant that's why i did all those evil things i did but this time of ignorance god went at and now he commands all men everywhere to repent as you say i've had the word of the lord i'm not ignorant anymore now i know that a day of judgment is coming and i want to escape the judgment of god the mercy of god will come to you am i talking to somebody there tonight the favor of god the grace of god will come to you in jesus name salvation somebody help me shout salvation that's what we are getting tonight full and free salvation that comes from heaven and then all your sins are forgiven that one comes tonight and then the burden of sin the guilt of sin and the yoke of sin and the punishment and the eternal judgment everything will pass away from you when the mercy of god that sets you free when that mercy comes if you say lord i come lord i come and then while that passage I'm, I'm reading to you i'm quoting to you that say the time of ignorance god winked that but now he commands all men everywhere to repent he says because god has set a day in the which he will judge all the actions of men all the transgressions of men but now he raised up jesus christ and he is the mediator between you and god between man and god and as you receive that jesus into your heart praise the lord the lord will not look at you as a sinner anymore you become a son of god a daughter of god and anywhere you go if satan wants to touch you 
the Lord will say, remove your hand from there. That is my son. Evil will not come upon your life anymore in Jesus' name. But you know, Belshazzar did not understand all that. There was a writing, and then it greatly troubled him. He needed an interpreter. Look at verse 18 of that Daniel chapter 5. It says, O thou king, the most high God, give Nebuchadnezzar. Is Daniel talking to him now, thy father? A kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. Then in verse 20, it says, But when his heart was lifted up, that's Nebuchadnezzar, when his heart was lifted up, his mind had in him pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne and he took his glory from him. And then in verse 22, it says, And thou his son Belshazzar thou his son Belshazzar are you a child of a pastor there and you know your father the pastor talks about salvation he talks about restoration he gives you the example of his life how he reconciled with God and yet even though you know the life of your father you still continue in sin judgment day is coming but if you will turn to the lord today and say lord i surrender the mercy of god will come to you today in jesus name did your parents buy a bible for you and then you have read the lives of samuel and the life of joseph and the life of daniel and the life of shadrach meshach and abednego and the life of mary the virgin and the lives of other people that followed after the lord and yet even though you have a bible in your hand and you go to church yet you are not following what you have read they had jesus to save them and they were saved but there you are you're still a sinner chewing sin drinking sin and eating sin and following gangs of sinners judgment day is coming but thank god today is your chance say today is my chance and the Lord will recover your life and restore your life in Jesus' name. For Belshazzar, it was different. Thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thy heart, do thou knewest all this. And then in verse 23, it says, But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, when you are drinking, you lifted up yourself against the God of heaven. When you are following after those women and concubines, you lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. When you contradicted and disobeyed and broke the laws of God, the commandments of God, you lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the God of silver and gods of gold and of brass and iron and wood and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, thou hast not glorified. In verse 24, it says, Therefore then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. That is a writing against every sinner. To start with, every bad thing you do, every evil thing you do, every sin you commit, whether small or great, whether it's a kind of copying other people, obeying other people, or living in sin, and they're not satisfied to live in sin by themselves, and they come to influence you, and then you, like a sheep that is meant for slaughter, you just follow them, everything is reaching down, and then 
then the judgment of God eventually is reaching down. But today is your chance for free salvation and free healing and free deliverance. If you will not wait, if you will not draw back too late, if you will say, today I come, salvation will come to you. Deliverance will come to you. And a miracle will come to you in Jesus' name. And now a writing came. Look at verse 25. This is the writing that was written. Many, many take ill you for sin. And then in verse 26, it says, This is the interpretation of the sin. Many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God knows what we do not know. He knows the number of days we're supposed to live. He knows the time we're going to spend here. And there are people, maybe they have only one day left, like Belshazzar, and they're still doing like we're doing before. They're still dancing and drinking and womanizing and doing all those things. And then the bell rings, they're gone into a lost eternity. God knows the measure of your days. That's the reason why you need to be wise today and say, Lord, all those evil things I've been doing, I suspend them. I stop them. I will not continue in them anymore. But in the case of Belshazzar, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Verse 27, in verse 27, take hill, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. The Lord weighed his action. Commandment number one, on one side of the scale, his action on the other side of the scale, he couldn't measure up. Commandment number two, on one side of the, of the scale, and his life on the other scale, he couldn't measure up. And when he was measured with all the commandments of God, he was found wanting. He failed. He failed. And there was no mercy for him. He didn't even ask for forgiveness or mercy himself. Look at the commandments of God as the Lord measures your life with the commandments of God where do you stand commandment number one thou shalt not have any other God before me where do you stand commandment number two you will not make any image where do you stand number three you will not call the name of the Lord in vain where do you stand number four you remember the Lord's day to keep it holy holy and perfect and worship the Lord where do you stand and then commandment number five that you honor you respect your parents all the days of your life where do you stand then you will not kill you will not steal and you will not bear false witness where do you stand you will not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor where do you stand Belshazzar was weighed in the balances and was found wanting the Lord is weighing all your actions by him all actions are weighed by him all habits are weighed by him your character is weighed and it says he was weighed and found wanting the man was short-sighted he was so short-sighted he couldn't reach the writing on the wall but today mercy comes to you i said mercy comes to you look at verse 28 it says in verse 28 Paris, that kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Even the thing it was, you know, holding on to, I am the king, I will drink as much as I want to drink. He lost everything. The Lord is showing us that. He said, look at that man. He became a fool at the end of his life. Do you want to be like Belshazzar at the end of your life? Where are you? I will not be like Belshazzar. I will not be foolish. I will not be weighed and found wanting. I will seek the face of the Lord, and as you seek the face of the Lord, forgiveness and salvation will come to you in Jesus' name. 
We're coming to number three now. Number three, we're looking at seekers of wonders, seekers of wonders with willingness to surrender. Those are the people the Lord will pardon. Those are the people the Lord will bring signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Seekers of wonders, seekers of wonders. You know, the, the wonder will not just come to you as if you know God uh, says, it's okay, if you will not come, I will come to you. If you will not believe, that's all right. If you will not seek me, that's all right. I'll give you the wonders anyway. No, the wonders are not as cheap as that. You must seek after the wonders of the Lord and with the willingness to surrender unto the Lord. And as you do that tonight, Right, miracle will come to you. We were in Kotonu, uh, Benin Republic, and this boy, 15 years of age, was brought by his parents from uh, the northern part of Benin Republic. His name Adamu, born deaf and dumb, completely deaf and dumb, could not hear anything. But when the parents were coming from their village in the north, in the northern part of the Republic, they brought him. And then as we were preaching the word, and then I said, the power of God is coming upon you now, and we preach, lo and behold, deaf ears open. The mouth that could not talk before began to talk, and we brought the boy and tested him. He could hear everyone. That's right, that's right. That's what happened. And then, and after that, when we finished that uh, crusade, they took the boy to the village. And when the, when the villagers saw, and remember, there was no church, no single church, no kind of church in that village. The father just had about the program in Kotono and came. And then, uh, when everybody saw Adamo, and they said, Adamo, from where you coming? I'm coming from Kotono. And then began to speak very well. The chief of the village there gave us free land, free land. Come and build that kind of church over here. But you know, you know why that happened? They were seekers of wonders. And if you will seek like that tonight and say, I leave all my idols behind, I leave all those bad things behind, and I come into the Lord, that power will come to you tonight. In that same crusade, there was a woman 40 years of age, and she is the name Christine. And I can remember that miracle very well. She was at the last stage of HIV, and the children, sons and daughters, they brought her, and she was on a stretcher, and they laid her down. And they were, you know, some of the children on this side, another one on that side. And then I prayed the message, and the woman was so weak, she could not stand. She was so weak, she could not walk, and she was just lying down helplessly there. And then we began to pray, the kind of prayer we're going to pray tonight. And that prayer will turn your life around if you are seeking the wonders of the Lord in Jesus' name. And then as we prayed, in the middle of the prayer, in the middle of the prayer, we had not said the final Amen. Christine, a 40-year-old mother at the last stage of HIV age and totally weak, got up by herself. The, the sons and the daughters, they didn't know when that happened. And then she got up and then she started running. Not walking, she was running. And when we said the final amen and we said in Jesus' name, we pray. The children opened their eyes, they couldn't see their mother. And then they were looking for her. Mama, where are you? Mama, where are you? Mama was exercising her new strength. And she was running and they ran after her and then when they got her they thought she was mad and then she started laughing and she said i am not mad i am healed power somebody shout power 
power came upon her life because she was seeking seeking and she was seeking with a willing heart to surrender i know you are there tonight and if you're seeking the lord and you want to surrender to the lord something will happen in your life power will come into your life anointing will break every yoke in your life that's why jesus said but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness when you raise up your hand that you want to receive the lord that's seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness when you stand up and you say i confess my sin i abandon my sin i will not go back into those sins anymore you're seeking the wonders of the lord the wonder of salvation the wonder of healing the wonder of deliverance the wonder of power from on high seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and then all these things shall be added unto you all these things shall be added unto you where are you all these things shall be added unto you healing added power added deliverance added solution to your problem added all all somebody shout all all the good things you are looking for will be added to your life in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is giving you the chance tonight. Even if they're the worst of sinners, there's salvation for you tonight. The worst of sinners, there's forgiveness for you tonight. The worst of sinners, there is pardon, there is peace for you tonight just indicate and as you raise up your hand and then you stand up that forgiveness will come to you judgment will not come anymore evil will not come anymore the peace of god will settle in your heart it's bowed and eyes closed if you want the salvation of the lord you want the pardon of your sin and you want the freedom that Christ gives redemption, righteousness that he gives, raise up your hand uh, anywhere you are. Praise the Lord. That's you there. That's you there. That's you there. Make it a date for the Lord. A day of appointment. A day of salvation for you. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Uh, I want Jesus to be my savior. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I surrender. I'm willing to surrender my life completely to the Lord. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand anywhere you are, please stand up. Please stand up. The Lord wants to see you. God bless you there. 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 Stand up wherever you are at the gallery on the ground floor, anywhere you are outside. Stand up and demonstrate that you want to have Jesus as your personal Savior. And as you are standing up, tell the Lord, confess your sins of the past, like uh, the sins of Belshazzar all the things you have committed you tell the lord i'm sorry now i surrender now i surrender i give my heart i give my life unto the lord jesus christ he will receive you whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved and immediately that salvation is coming to you right now amen amen let me pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all these new sons and new daughters who are coming to Christ now according to your promise. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Change their hearts. Change their lives. And the things they used to do that was to bring judgment upon them, help them to dislike all those things and not to want to do them anymore in Jesus' name. Let us be a witness in their hearts that now they're children of God. Their sins are forgiven. Freedom has come to them. Free salvation, true salvation has come to them right now. 
Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation you have given them. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. You are ready for your miracle. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Seekers of wonders but willingness to surrender. As we have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, every sickness, every infirmity, every impossibility, and every challenge and problem in your life, the Lord is touching you right now. And when you hear the final amen, check up your life and check up the child you brought, the miracle will have happened there. Your blind eyes will open. Amen. Your deaf ears will open. Amen. Dumb tongues will speak out. Amen. And if you are lame, paralyzed, after the final amen, you are not paralyzed anymore, give action and expression to your faith as you stand up. Power will meet you right there. Amen. And whatever the problem you have, the Lord is touching you now. I will receive. I will receive. And you'll demonstrate it. Lay your hand where you have the problem and raise up the other hand. And then the expectant is coming. Father, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I pray for all your people. I pray, Lord, as they have come, they heard that was still the same mighty God from generation to generation. And that you are working wonders. And they expect you to do wonders in their lives. Lord, do it in every life in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Lord, I pray those blind eyes be opened now deaf ears be opened now dumb tongues speak out in Jesus name anything swollen there in your body hands tummy legs anywhere be healed in Jesus name those who have been curable life-threatening diseases like cancer like hiv aids like tb and whatever other life-threatening disease be healed in jesus name those who are paralyzed having stroke having broken bones i pray those broken bones will join together right now and you will not be able to walk because of paralysis the power of God come into your life right now rise up and walk in Jesus name Lord I pray that everywhere now I send forth the word of power unto everyone be healed in Jesus name you are delivered in Jesus name Every yoke in your life is broken by the anointing. Manifest yourself in every life, Lord. I thank you because I know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. I got it. Do what you couldn't do before. Put into manifestation now. It's right there. Miracle, healing, signs, wonders, right there now. Amen. Amen. 